All right, thanks for watching. And today we'll define the concept of an inf, which is entirely analogous to the concept of a soup. In other words, inf is just a generalization of the minimum. And again, by analogy, if I tell you you did not get the lowest grade, it means someone else got a lower grade than you. So it's kind of, I don't know if it's a happy or sad situation, but let again S be a non-empty uh, non-empty subset of R. So let M be a lower bound. For S, then we say that M is the inf of S if again M is the greatest lowest bound or again think min ish okay uh, if the following is true again this is S and this is M whenever you take a number bigger than little m so if for all m1 M1 bigger than M, there is some S1 in S that is uh, smaller than M1. S1 in S such that S1 is strictly less than M1. So uh, suppose M1 says, oh, I'm the new lower bound, then S1 says, oh, no, you're not, because I'm smaller than you. And again, if you did not get the lowest grade, someone, there's someone else who got the, a lower grade than you. And let's just do a couple of examples, so just two examples to illustrate. Uh, consider again the interval, in this case, a three comma infinity. S is 3 comma infinity, what does it mean for the inf to be 3? Again, that is 3, and that is S. Then, the inf of S is 3. And why is that? Well, first of all, 3 is a lower bound, and also, suppose M1 M1 is strictly greater than 3, and what we want to do, we want to find S1 in S that is smaller than M1. Such that S1 is smaller than 3, uh, and smaller than M1, but if you want, just choose S1 to be the midpoint, and that does the trick. Let S1 to be just the midpoint between 3 and M1. And you can show that, in fact, S1 does the trick. So, In other words, S1 is indeed smaller than M1 because it's the midpoint, but also S1 is strictly greater than 3, so it is in your set. So again, you can watch the soup video to see the details of this. Similarly, as a follow-up, if you have a set that does have a minimum, then the inf is the minimum. In other words, in that case, you do the same trick where you just pick S1 to be zero and then that works. Last but not least is one more example I want to talk about, which I talked about a couple of videos before that, which is the one with the sequence that just goes up and down, so n to the minus 1 to the n. So let s be if one, the set of number or uh, the set of elements of the form n to the minus 1 to the n, where n is a natural number. And again, it's just the set if you want. 1, 2, 1 third, 4, 1 fifth, 6, 1 seventh, etc, etc. And what it looks like again, if this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 
three, four, five, six. What this looks like is this is one, two, and then one third, four, one fifth, six, etc., etc. So interesting. What happens is we discussed this like a couple of videos before. For even numbers, it basically goes to infinity, but what's interesting is for odd numbers, it basically goes to zero. And what we're claiming here is that even though the minimum of this sequence doesn't exist, because the sequence is always positive, we still claim that the infimum is zero. So the sequence kinda the lowest number is zero. So claim the infimum of this sequence of this set is zero. And again, what do we have to show? Again, suppose I tell you you did not get the lowest grade. So suppose. M1 is bigger than the lowest grade, which is zero. What you have to show is that there is some student who got a lower grade than you. So you have to find some number in that sequence that is smaller than M1. So what we really want to do, we want to find N such that n to the minus 1 to the n, it's smaller than m1. Now here's the thing, which ones do we consider? Well, for even n, notice that this sequence just blows up. So in particular, we just want to focus on odd values of n. So suppose so suppose n is odd. We'll choose that later on, then notice n to the minus 1 to the n becomes what? Well, minus 1 to the n becomes minus 1. So n to the minus 1, which is 1 over n. And what do we want? We want this to be less than m1. So notice it's really enough just to choose a number n that is bigger than 1 over m1. So, da, da, da. what this means is n is bigger than 1 over m1. So in other words, what do you want to choose? Simply choose any odd number that's bigger than m1 over m1. So let n be any number, any odd number, that is bigger than 1 over m1, then with that number, my n to the minus 1 to the n is an s, but we just saw that n to the minus 1 to the n, it's less than m1. And that's precisely what you want. In other words, you want some element, let's call this s1, in your set that is smaller than m1. So uh, by definition of infimum, you have shown that the infimum of your set is 0. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.